In this lecture, we'll be discussing about acute rheumatic fever. So it is a multi-system disease resulting from an autoimmune reaction uh, to the infection with group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Uh, it basically causes the inflammation of the collagen tissue all over the body, but it chiefly affects heart, CNS, joints, and the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, inflammation also, uh, except in the heart, where the inflammation can persist for the long duration and disease. Uh, usually, it occurs after one to three weeks of the sore throat by group A beta hemolytic streptococci. Uh, only 0.5 to 3% of the children develop acute rheumatic fever, and it is the disease of the poverty. And about 95% of the ARF and RST patients, uh, death occur in the developing countries. The hot spots are uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, Indian subcontinent, and the Pacific nations. Uh, there is decline in the incidence of the acute rheumatic fever in the industrialized countries because of the improved living condition and the decreased transmission of the uh, group A beta hemolytic streptococci. So the high-risk groups uh, include the lower socioeconomic status like poverty, uh, people living with a malnutrition, uh, overcrowding, large family, reduced access to the healthcare. These are the risk factors, which are basically this uh, acute rheumatic fever occurs in the children between the age of 5 to 15 years, and it is rare in adults above the age of 30 or below and in the children less than three years old. In adults, it is more common in, at the end of the uh, second and the beginning of the third decade. Where the, um, secondly, RSD is more common in female in comparison to the males. So rheumatic fever is a very important cause of chronic valvular heart disease in the developing countries and throughout the globe. About 60% of the patients who develop acute rheumatic fever, fever land up with rheumatic heart disease. So now talking about the pathogenesis, uh, this condition is due to the abnormal immune response by human host to one or more of the group A streptococcal antigens. So the antigens present in the group A streptococci, they cross-react with the human connective tissues, uh, particularly the hard bulk glycoproteins. So the similarity between the group uh, specific carbohydrate of the group A streptococcus and the glycoprotein of the hard valve uh, leads to the uh, molecular mimicry and damage to the hard valves. As you can see in this picture, uh, when a person mounts the immunity, so the antibodies which are formed against the uh, antigenic components of the group epita have similar antigens which are present in the heart valves. So there will be the deposition of the antigen antibody complex in the heart and that will lead to the damage to the uh, uh, endocardium, myocardium and the pericardium of the heart. So this is the basic mechanism behind the development of the rheumatic heart disease. This picture it shows the natural history of the acute rheumatic fever. So after the initial exposure to the group A streptococcus, streptococcal upper respiratory tract infection. So this respirated properly, they can develop rheumatic heart disease. So once the patient develops rheumatic endocarditis and all these complications in long term will lead to disability and even the death and patient might be need to undergo various surgeries which can uh, complicate their lives. Rheumatic fever basically affects the all layers of the heart, endocardium, myocardium, and the pericardium, and it also involves the valves of the endocardium. Usually, the, when there is inflammation, in, uh, inflammation in the endocardium, myocardium, or the pericardium, um, the healing process um, is continued side by side, which leads to the carditis. Uh, following the carditis, which leads to the formation of scar tissues, and it mainly affects the valves of the endocardium, leading to the mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, aortic stenosis, or aortic regurgitation. So usually mitral valve and aortic valve are most commonly affected by the acute rheumatic fever and the rheumatic heart disease, although tricuspid valve and pulmonary valves are rarely involved. So the important findings in the biopsy of the myocardium is the presence of the ascoparides, uh, which confirms the diagnosis of the rheumatic carditis. No, no, so we'll be discussing about the clinical features. Uh, the patient can present with the CDNM scoria, evidence of the prior sore throat, flitting arthritis or arthralgia, edema due to the heart failure and the typical rash of the acute rheumatic fever, edema marginatum, uh, which is characterized by the uh, macule at the initial stage. And the later on, there is the presence of the central clearing, the rash evanescent, and the patient can also be present with a fever, high-grade fever, and there can be the presence of a soft tennis nodules over the bones and tendons, as well as the patient can present with the symptoms of the carditis, like uh, softness of breath, syncope, and they also have the symptoms of pericarditis like pain, um, pericardial or friction rub, and they can also present with the murmurs like caricums murmur, aortic or the mitral regurgitation, and in some patients, if the conducting system is affected, patient can present with the heart block. <clears throat>
Many patients will present with the non-specific symptoms like fever, anorexia, lethargy, joint pain, skin rash, carditis, and the neurological features, which are the non-specific signs and symptoms. So arthritis occurs in the 75% of the patients. It is the most common uh, symptom sign as well as the, <coughs> it is the first symptom of the disease. It is characterized by the painful swollen large joints, basically knees, ankles, elbows, and the wrists. And it, it is usually presents as a polyarthritis, which is asymmetrical, usually flitting type, migratory, which finishes in the one joint and then begins in another. This is a typical pattern of the arthritis in cases of the acute rheumatic fever. So next common presentation is uh, carditis. Uh, this acute rheumatic fever can cause pancarditis. So pericarditis can present with the chest pain, pericardial effusions, low voltage EKG with ST elevation in the tumor inversion. Similarly, myocarditis can present with sinus tachycardia, S3 gland, gallo, cardiomegaly, premature beds, and similar endocarditis it can present with the presence of MR, AR, or the caricoms murmur, which is the mid-diastolic murmur lobe is due to the valvulitis of the mitral valve flesh. Next present in the CDNM scoria, it is not that common. Uh, it occurs, it is a late presentation, and it occurs after four to six months uh, due to the CNS involvement of her occurs without any symptoms. So it is characterized by purposeless, irregular, sudden, and the non-repetitive movements of the both extremities, face and trunk. Uh, it is more common in teenagers and the females, and it usually resolves within the six weeks, but can last up to uh, six months or more. This can also present with the subcutaneous nodules, which are present usually over the extensor surface of the knees, elbows, wrist, and in the suboccipital region. So nodules are more common when carditis is also present, and these are formed non-tender in the mobile nodules. And the skin is not rare or inflamed, and they usually last for one to two weeks and rarely more than one month. So next is the erythema marginatum, which is a typical rash of the acute rheumatic fever. It is present in the 10 to 20% of patients. However, it is not uh, so common in these uh, South Asian countries because of the, because of the skin tone. It is a non pruritic skin rash. Um, it presents with the red macules with a clear central area surrounded by the uh, red border. And it is usually present over trunk in the back and it is almost never present on the face. Patient can also present with other non-specific symptoms like abdominal pain, uh, symptoms of the pleural effusion, pneumonia, or the pleurisy. So this picture shows the typical gradient and margin atom of the acute uh, This is the picture which shows the subcutaneous nodules in the elbow. So for the diagnosis, uh, we have to we there is no single test which can diagnose the acute rheumatic fever. So we'll have to diagnose the uh, acute rheumatic fever based on the set of the criteria. For this, we use the Jones criteria. And uh, this Jones criteria has got the major and the minor criteria. So for the initial diagnosis of acute rheumatic fever, if any patient meets two major criteria and one major plus two minor manifestations, then we consider them to have an initial ARF. And for the recurrent ARF, we can use two major, one major and two minor or the presence of the three minor criteria that the diagnostic criteria. So for the major criteria, in the case of the low risk populations, carditis, polyarthritis, chorea, erythema marginatus, marginatus, and the subcutaneous nodules uh, make the major criteria. And for the uh, moderate to high risk population, where there is a high prevalence of the acute rheumatic fever, carditis, arthritis, even monoarthritis, polyarthritis, or the polyarthralgia uh, come under the major criteria. Similarly, chorea, erythema marginatum, and the subcutaneous nodules, the nodules also form the major criteria. Similarly, there are certain differences in the minor criteria between the low risk and the high risk population. In the minor criteria in the low risk population, uh, there will be polyarthralgia, fever more than 38.5 degrees Celsius, ESR more than 60 in the first hour, CR2 more than 3 mg per DL, and the prolonged PR interval. Whereas in the moderate to high risk population, even monoarthralgia can is placed in the minor criteria, fever more than 38 degrees Celsius, ESR more than 30, CR2 more than 30, and the prolonged PR. And these are the other components of the minor criteria. So if the patient fulfills the required criteria according to the Jones criteria, then we can diagnose the acute rheumatic fever. So for to make a presumptive diagnosis of the acute rheumatic fever, uh, uh, we don't need the evidence of the preceding streptococcal infection in cases of the isolated chorea or pancarditis if other causes has been excluded. Uh, except in this condition, in all other causes, uh, we should also have the evidence of the streptococcal infection uh, prior to diagnosing the acute rheumatic fever by the Jones criteria. <coughs> so in case of the established rheumatic heart disease or the prior rheumatic fever, the diagnosis of the acute rheumatic fever can be made 
based only on the presence of the multiple minor criteria and the evidence of the preceding group A streptococcal pharyngitis. So these are the recommended tests uh, in cases of the possible acute rheumatic fever. So the tests should be performed to diagnose the rheumatic fever and to rule out the other uh, possibilities. Like uh, to rule out other possibilities, we can perform tests like blood culture to rule out endocarditis. We can aspirate the joint to rule out other cause of arthritis. Similarly, copper cell plasmin antinuclear antibodies and drug screen can be done to rule out the coriform movements, causes of coriform movements. Similar serology and the autoimmune markers can be used for the testing for the arovirus infections, autoimmune conditions, or the reactive arthritis. And there are the other tests which can be performed to diagnose the acute fever. They include the white blood cell count, ESR, CRP, blood culture, ECG, X-ray test, echocardiogram, and these are the used for uh, diagnosis. And similarly, to find out the evidence of the, to confirm the evidence of the group A streptococcal infection, we can do the throat swab culture as well as the entry streptococcal serology like ASO titer, anti-DNSB titers. <coughs> Basically, the evidence of the systemic illness is given by the leukocytosis, res GSR, and CRP. So the evidence of the preceding group A beta like this streptococcal infection uh, is provided by the throat swab culture or the anti-streptolysin O antibody titer or the anti-DNSB titer or anti-haluronidase titer. Uh, this is an echocardio graphic image from a five-year-old boy with a chronic rheumatic heart disease. Uh, this diastolic image demonstrates that the leaflet, uh, there is a leaflet thickening of the mitral valve and the restriction of the anterior movement of the leaflet tip and the doming of the body of the leaflet towards the interventricular uh, septum. And this appearance uh, is commonly described with a hockey stick or an elbow deformity, which is a typical feature of the uh, rheumatic heart disease. So other investigations will be targeted towards uh, finding the evidence of the carditis like X-ray will show cardiomegaly, pulmonary edema, EKG will show first degree and second degree heart block and the features of pericarditis. Similarly, ECHO will show the cardiac dilation and deep valve abnormalities. So the major differential diagnosis for the acute rheumatic fever include rheumatic arthritis, GRA, collagen disease and the septic arthritis. So for the diagnosis, there are, again, as I mentioned already, there are no specific lab, lab tests clinical and the supporting evidence from the microbiology and the clinical immunology lab is very important to make the definitive diagnosis because if we miss the diagnosis, we might miss the chance to treat the patient and patient might later develop complications like rheumatic heart disease. So the diagnosis may be easily missed or delayed because a combination of the sign and symptom is required for the diagnosis and the people with ARF do not always present to the health system because the symptoms may not be considered to be serious and the other concomitants may take the priority and the transfer to the health facility may be difficult basically in the poor countries. So the healthy staff may not recognize the signs and symptoms and the ARF may be confused with the other illness and the ARF symptoms may be confused with the spots in the So these are the factors which might lead to the missed or the delayed diagnosis of the acute rheumatic fever. However, uh, once the diagnosis is confirmed, uh, we should uh, uh, treat the patient and the goal of the treatment is to eradicate the streptococcal infection to control the inflammatory process of the ARF and the preventive measures against the another episode of the rheumatic fever and the management of the complications like heart failure and the valvular damage and relieving the symptoms. These are the goals for the treatment. So for the eradication of the streptococcal infection, oral penicillin V, 500 milligram twice a day or erythromycin 250 milligram six hourly for 10 days is preferred. And similarly, we can use the benzathione penicillin G 1.2 million units in intramuscular single dose for those who are more than 30 kg and six lakhs units for those who are less than 30 kg is preferred. So for the control of the inflammatory process of the acute traumatic fever, bed rest and the supportive uh, treatment is uh, used. So the aspirin, it is an NSAID which controls fever and joint pain. And it, we can also use steroids in cases of a severe arthritis and the carditis. However, the role of the steroid is controversial. So for the prevention of the, another episode of the rheumatic fever, secondary profile axis <coughs> is very important so that the we can prevent the recurrent streptococcal infection and the recurrent is uh, because the recurrent streptococcal infection will lead to the increased damage to the heart valve so preventing the recurrent upper respiratory tract infection will prevent the progression and development of the rheumatic heart disease that is the reason why secondary profile axis is very important 
So you can use the following antibiotics like benzathione penicillin G, 1.2 million units, even every three weeks or two weeks in the high risk of patients. This is a preferred drug and very highly effective drugs. However, if this is not feasible, if it is not available, then in the, if the patient prefers oral drug, we can use the oral penicillin V, 250 milligrams per roll twice a day. And we can also use, if patient has got penicillin allergy, we can use erythromycin or the sulfur diacin. So this is the criteria. This is the criteria or the duration of the profile axis. In patients who have got rheumatic fever without carditis, the duration of profile axis is usually for five years after the last attack or 21 years of age, whichever is longer. However, if the patient has carditis, but no residual bulb disease, we should use a profile axis for 10 years after the last attack and 21 years, whichever is longer. And similarly, if the patient has rheumatic fever with persistent valvular disease, uh, if it is clinically or on echocardiography, then the patient might require profile axis for 10 years after the last attack or 40 years of age, whichever is longer. And in some very high risk patients, they might require lifelong profile axis. Next aspect of the treatment is management of the complications. Basically, we need to manage the uh, heart failure and the valve damage. For the heart failure, we can use diuretics, vasodilators, AC inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, digoxins, immunodiron anticoagulants, and ultimately in some patients, heart transplantation, transplantation may be indicated. So for the valvular damage, valve replacement surgery or the repair might be indicated, uh, and the repair or the surgery can be uh, invasive or the minimally invasive, or patient can also undergo the balloon valvuloplasty. For the chorea, treatment of the chorea is basically done by uh, using sodium valvoid or the carbamazepine for one to two weeks. And in cases of the refractory chorea, IV immunoglobulin is found to cause rapid revolution. So talking about the prognosis, <clears throat> once a patient develops acute rheumatic fever, if we don't treat them properly, the untreated disease will last for the 12 weeks. However, with the proper treatment, disease course can be reduced to the one to two weeks. So the proper treatment will not only reduce the duration of the disease, but it will also decrease the chances of developing the complication. The notorious complication which can occur after acute rheumatic fever is rheumatic heart disease. So the, basically the goal of treating acute rheumatic fever is to ultimately prevent the chances of developing rheumatic heart disease. So thank you so much.